And the scripture is taken is um, taken from the New International Version of the Bible, John chapter twelve, verses ten to twelve. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as as I have kept my Father's commands. And remain in his love. I have told you, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this love one another as I have loved you. And thus concludes the scripture reading, John chapter 15, verses 10 to 12. For the past few days, for the past few days, joys and happiness have been a recurring theme that's been presented to me. So I thought I would share some insights that have been shared with me. And with everything that's been going on, perhaps joy and happiness could help us along the way. Now, the scripture I just read talks about the commands. The commands represent universal law, that you should remain in harmony with divine life. Now we are talking, we're not talking about the commandments told by Moses about the things that you should not do, but rather the things that we should do. Love one another. Love is one of the greatest faculty. Love brings joy and happiness. Individual love makes us giddy and happy, and it can energize us. And even though individual love or love of, for one specific person, it comes from our personality or ego. Individual love is still a form of love, an expression of the divine. Now, divine love is the greatest energy that binds us together, that brings us life that makes us evolve, that makes us grow. Divine love within us is also the energy and the love that makes us want to love ourselves. And then there's joy. Joy is also a great faculty. And for many, it might be one of the hardest to, to reach. Joy and happiness. It's a shame. Because when we feel joy, we immediately raise our vibrations and we express the divine that resides within us. Joy. So love and joy. So in love and joy is what raised the vibration of the world. When we feel joy, we share our light. We share divine light. And then one person after another, gets a little piece of that joy, of that loving and joyous vibration that we just shared, because joy is contagious. And if you follow the events of the past few days, for a few days, you know how precious joy is. There's also a thing that we often forget, perhaps due to our upbringing, or perhaps because of all the things that, that we feel that life has thrown at us. And that thing is that God or life wants us to be happy. It's our birthright. It is our God-given right. And why shouldn't it be? We are beings of light. And when we're sad, we lower our vibrations and then our lights get dimmer. But when we're happy and when we're joyful, we generate more light and we radiate more light. On this earth plane and in modern societies, joy, happiness can be hard to find also. We, we have so many obligations. We are stretched so thin. We are so busy and we feel so stressed out that we're often not able to access the joy and the happiness that resides within us. Or at least we think that we can't. We think it's not there. But you know what? 
as long as we breathe and as long as blood flows through our veins, the divine joy within our body is within our body. We chart a path for our life. And yes, we have obligations left and right. We do more to conform and meet our obligations that we do things for ourselves and for our well-being. Instead of doing things that bring us joy, that energize us, that raise our vibrations and, and express the divine love within us, we do things that drain our energy. And as some say, it sucks the life out of us. Do you sometimes see friends out of obligation? Because all you wanted to do is to chill at home, go for a walk, or just chill, or do something else. But instead, you meet the friends because you've committed to do so. In Living with Joy, Oren, a light channeled or inspired by Sanaya Roman, Oren tells us that we, we do not commit to doing things that bring us joy because deep inside, we don't believe that we deserve joy. Well, if that's the case, don't we need to change that? Personally, I've always been someone who does what needs to be done to meet my obligations rather than doing things that bring me joy. I give some of my time to others, and yes, that includes my children, of course. But I often feel that I have so little energy left that I don't do anything for me. Or at least until recently. Most of you know that I'm a mother, a single mother of three. I have, I have a full-time job, and I often don't allow myself to do simple things for me, like get my hair done, my nails. I very rarely go out to dinner with friends. I'm fully committed to my work, to my family. And yes, in that order. <laughs> but there were recently some big changes in my life and I suddenly had even more responsibilities. And then gradually, gradually, I just couldn't anymore. I realized that I hadn't done enough for me. I hadn't done things that energized me in quite some time. And I had a case of burnout. I just gave it all to others and didn't leave anything for me. It was time to take a break. Now I remembered that some 20 years ago when, when I was sick, music helped me. Music vibrations helped raise my own vibration. And that was healing. So this time around, to make sure that I would do things for me, things that energize me, when I was taking some rest, I decided to take some piano lessons to complement the two and a half years of lesson I took as a child. So I asked my kid's piano teacher if she had some time to teach me. She agreed. Now she's someone I, I love dearly. Doing something that I like, learning something new, and Doing so, spending time with a good friend was really an added bonus. It was a great combo. So I started my lesson about a month ago and I'm having so much fun. I thought that I wouldn't be able to continue after I went back to work because I wouldn't have time to practice. Work, children, church, but I can because I'm working from home so I can practice during my lunch break. It's better than scrolling social media or, you know, just doing something mindless. I can also play when the kids are in bed. Now, it, this is getting more challenging because the kids are getting older and they're going to bed later and lower, later. But you know what? I can let them do things that they need to do. Playing music and feeling the music inside of me and learning more music brings me joy. 
If you wonder why something or sometimes learning new things feel good, it's because when you learn something new, as you expand your knowledge and bring build new pathways in your brain, you also expand your consciousness. There are many things that we can do to bring joy and happiness into our lives. I recently read an interview of Laurie Santos, a happiness scientist and professor, professor at Yale University. Yes, there are happiness professors who teach the psychology of happiness. Another one that I uh, that I saw at a conference uh, several times, several years ago was Adam Grant. You can follow him, uh, look him up. Anyway, anyway, uh, the thing that um, Laurie Santos mentioned uh, in the interview it really resonated with me. She said, we have to listen to our intuition. She says that our mind lies to us. She says we have very strong intuitions about the things that make us happy, but we don't listen to those intuitions. Yes, that comes from a scientist. She further explains that sometimes when she has a busy day at work, even though she's very much aware that the data suggests that working out or, taking, or talking to a friend would make her happy, she watches, and I'm going to quote, a crappy Netflix movie. Now, I'm not saying cancel your Netflix subscription, but listen to your feelings and then do things that your higher self is, is telling you to do. In Living with Joy, Oren gives us many examples of what we can do. And I'll just share one or two. Oren says, each morning, Plan your day and ask yourself what you could do that would bring you joy that day. If you meditate in the morning, you can do that as part of your meditation. And if you, you know, meditate another time or if you don't meditate, just spend a couple of minutes thinking of, you know, what you can do that day that you, would bring you joy. Another thing that Lauren says is that Every now and then, make a list of seven things that you enjoy doing. And then think of each one of them. And ask yourself, what stops you from doing them? Now, take one or two. And think of, you know, think of those two that would bring the most joy into your life. And then what? Just do it. If you, have, if you have attended service here for a while, you've heard several times that we create with our thoughts and we create with our intentions. And then we attract what we send into the universe. How you approach each, each day will influence the outcome of your day. So I'm gonna share another quote from Abraham. Uh, a group of high level or light beings that is channeled by Esther Hicks. It's known as Abraham Hicks. It says, milk every moment for all the pleasure you can get from it. When you say it is my dominant intent to look for the things that feel good today, no matter where I'm going, no matter what I'm doing, no matter who I'm doing, who I'm doing it with. It is my dominant intent to look for that, what I'm wanting to see, to look for things that feel good. And then the more you develop the habit of that kind of vibration, the more the universe understands that that's who you are. And so the more you have access to only those things, those kinds of things, end quote. So now you have a plan. I'm going to share another quote uh, that I heard also a few days ago. And it's from a young lady who recently made her transition after metastatic breast cancer. Her name is Jane Mrzewski. 
She was famous, uh, she was made famous on America's Got Talent. She went by Nightbird and she said, you know, when she was very sick, she said, you can't wait until life isn't hard anymore before you decide to be happy, end quote. Happiness brings more joy and joy brings more happiness into our life and also into the lives of those around us because we radiate more light. And in closing, my last quote, I'm going to borrow it, not steal it from Reverend Jackson, but I'm going to twist it. Smile and be joyful. Many blessings. <laughs>